द एडवेंचर्स ऑफ ऑगी मार्च बाय सॉल बैलो कैरेक्टर्स समरी एनालिसिस हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द डिस्कोर्स सॉल बैलो वाज अ कैनेडियन बॉर्न ऑथर हु सेटल्ड इन अमेरिका हिज पेरेंट्स वर ज्यूइश माइग्रेंट्स फ्रॉम रशिया ही वाज बोर्न ऑन जून 10 1915 एंड डाइड ऑन अप्रैल 5 2005 द एडवेंचर्स ऑफ ऑगी मार्च वाज द थर्ड नोवेल बाय सॉल बैलो that was published in 1953 it is a picaresque novel with numerous episodes surrounding a likable rogue character of low birth the picaro the novel is often termed a 20th century rendition of mark twain's the adventures of huckleberry finn the novel is also a fine example of the wilden's roman style as it is structured around the development of the protagonist ogi march into maturity in an autobiographical manner Saul Bello won the 1954 National Book Award for fiction and was also awarded the 1976 Nobel Prize for Literature partly for the adventures of Oggy March. The novel tells the story of an American Jew, Oggy, who grows up during the Great Depression and then sees the days of the Second World War. Characters of the Adventures of Oggy March. Oggy March is a Jewish American boy from Chicago. whose family is suffering poverty during the great depression ogi continues to grow and travels through mexico and europe doing various jobs and businesses joining the war and finally marrying and settling in paris ogi's mother rebecca or mama is a simple minded poor woman who grows her three sons simon is ogi's elder brother who is the topper of his high school class simon's girlfriend sissy flexner rejects him for a wealthy man and then Simon woos a rich girl Charlotte Magnus and marries him after marriage he manages the coal mining business of his father in law and becomes hugely successful Georgie is Augie's younger brother who is autistic or idiot by birth Grandma Losh is an old lady who assists mama in the upbringing of the boys she teaches the boys what she learned from her experience as the wife of a successful businessman She is a Machiavellian in nature and believes that the ends justify the means. Ian Horn is a crippled old man and entrepreneur who guides Augie and employs him. Ian Horn's son Arthur wishes to be a poet. Ian Horn suffers great losses during the Great Crash. Mr. Ranling is a wealthy sporting goods businessman in Evanston who employs Augie. His wife Mrs. Ranling especially likes Augie and takes him with her to holiday parties. Oggy meets a beautiful girl Esther Frenchel during such a party and falls in love with her. However, Esther rejects him because she feels Oggy is Mrs. Ranling's gigolo. Her sister Thea becomes infatuated with Oggy and develops an affair. Joe Gorman is a well-known criminal who meets Oggy in Chicago and appoints him as a partner to rob a leather goods store. Later on he offers Augie a job to assist him in the illegal importation of immigrants over the Canadian border. Five Properties is a real estate magnate, a rich businessman whom Sissy Flexner marries after rejecting Simon. Mimi Villar is an attractive waitress who works at a student hash house near the University of Chicago. Augie lives in the same student house where Mimi works and lives. He befriends her while she dates his friend Fraser. Lucy is Charlotte Magnus's younger sister who falls in love with Augie. Stella is a beautiful woman dating Oliver. When Oliver gets arrested, she asks for the help of Augie to escape to Mexico City. She and Augie fall in love and later on they marry and settle in Paris where Stella works as an actor for an international film company. Rani is Simon's assistant at work. She traps Simon and becomes his mistress. She accuses Simon of impregnating her and files a lawsuit but Charlotte intervenes and saves Simon. Robbie is an eccentric millionaire of Chicago who appoints Oggy to assist him in writing a book on human happiness. Jimmy Clean is a childhood friend of Oggy and worked with him at departmental stores. Later on he becomes a police officer. Clem Tambo is Jimmy's cousin and a student of psychology at the University of Chicago. He loves Mimi and hence befriends Augie. He advises Augie to join the army and go to the war. Minta Chain is a successful older Ar- Armenian divorce lawyer in New York. He asks Augie to manage his black market dealings in Europe. Bestishaw is also a native of Chicago whom Augie meets during the war. 
They survive a shipwreck. Jacqueline is Augie and Stella's housemaid in Paris. Summary of the Adventures of Augie March The novel begins in Chicago during the Great Depression period. Mama, Rebecca, is raising her three little kids in a poverty-stricken situation. She is a Jew, a simple, kind-hearted woman. It is not known if her husband is dead or if he abandoned her. Simon is her eldest son, who is bright student. Augie is the younger son, who is not so bright. And Georgie is the youngest, whom everyone calls an idiot, as he appears to be mentally challenged. Rebecca's eyesight is weak. They are living on rent in a house owned by an old lady whom the kids call Grandma Losh. She is lonely as her real sons have gone to work and nobody knows much about them. Grandma Losh is a scheming woman with an eccentric view of the world. She is cynical and Machiavellian and believes that the ends justify the means. She is dominating and in the absence of their father, she tries to control the boys as their mother is working and half blind. She forces Simon and Augie to seek a job at the age of 12 so that they may help in raising the family and paying the rent. As Simon grows old, he begins reb rebelling against Grandma Losh and this creates a power struggle within the house. Mama loves her kids but she is completely submissive to Grandma Losh and doesn't oppose her much. Grandma Losh forces the family to send Georgie in an asylum as she thinks he is mentally challenged. This further creates tension in the family. Simon, being older, decides to take a corrective course and begins finding out about the sons of Grandma Losh. With their help, Simon succeeds in sending Grandma Losh to a nursing home, citing her growing dementia as the reason for institu institutionalization. When Augie enters high school, he loses attention in his studies and begins working for Ironhorn, who is a cripple but an excellent entrepreneur and real estate tycoon. Augie gets too impressed by him and considers him a father figure. Ironhorn appoints Augie as his assistant. Augie becomes closer to Ironhorn than his own son Arthur, who is negligent towards Ironhorn's business and wishes to become a poet. Though Ironhorn is partially paralyzed, he is very hardworking and intelligent. However, he made most of his fortune through shady businesses. As the stock market crashes, Ironhorn loses most of his money. Yet, he takes the loss with optimism and decides to work hard again. Meanwhile, Augie and Simon clear their high school exams. Simon tops the class and becomes the high school valedictorian. Augie too passes the exam and to celebrate the occasion, Ironhorn takes him to a brothel and offers him drinks. Ironhorn learns that Augie has made acquaintance with Joe Gorman, a known criminal who appoints Augie in a robbery of a leather goods shop as his assistant. Ironhorn admonishes Augie and encourages him to opt for higher studies. Augie then chooses to go to Evanston to get admission to a college at the University of Chicago. He also manages to get a sporting goods sales job. The business is owned by a wealthy old man, Mr. Renling, who offers Augie to a place to live. Mrs. Renling finds Augie very polite and begins considering him as her own son as Renlings are childless. She arranges for his riding lessons and other courses at Northwestern. During the summer holidays, Mrs. Renling takes Augie to a picnic where he meets Esther Frenchel, a beautiful girl in her twenties, and falls in love with her. However, Esther rejects Augie, but her younger sister Thea is impressed by him and leaves him a letter that she loves him and that, in the future, she will meet him. After returning to Evanston, Mr. Renling shows his desire to officially adopt Augie as their son and heir of their property and business. Augie declines the offer and infuriates Mrs. Renling and then he is forced to go back to Chicago. Augie meets Joe Gorman again who asks him to be his partner in transporting illegal immigrants to the country. Augie declines the job but agrees to help Joe drive the car out east. On their way, the police track them and Joe Gorman gets arrested. Augie escapes and returns to Chicago through hitchhiking in freight, like freight trains. When he reaches home, he sees that his mother is living alone and she is almost blind now. He learns that Grandma Losh died away and Simon is absconding as he took too much loan to the betting pool. Simon also sold most of the furniture in the home. 
He wished to become rich instantly to marry his girlfriend Sissy Flexner, who ditched Simon to marry Pi Properties, a cousin of Simon and Augie, who is a rich real estate tycoon. Simon was too disappointed and angry at this. He committed some violence and spent a night in jail, and then he absconded. Augie begins seeking jobs and helping his mother. He begins selling books and settles in a small room near the Chicago University where he meets Mimi Villars. She is an attractive waitress who is dating Oliver. Oliver impregnates him and Mimi seeks Augie's help in aborting the child. After some days, he learns that Simon has married into a wealthy family, taking cold heiress Charlotte Magnus as his wife. Simon wants Augie to marry Charlotte's cousin Lucy to gain access to even more of the Magnus family's money. Augie, however, becomes involved in a scandal when he gets caught helping his friend Mimi Villars obtain an illegal abortion. Both the Magnus family and Simon renounce Augie. One night, Augie hears a knock on his door and he opens and as he opens, he finds Thea Frenchel outside. She came looking for him. Augie falls in love with her and they begin living together. Soon, Augie learns that Thea is an eccentric girl. She is very honest but violent and fierce. She loves hunting. Thea persuades Augie to travel to Mexico where they settle with a family living on rent. Thea begins training a hunting hawk. The hawk fails their expectations and Augie meets an accident while training the hawk. Thea then sends the hawk to a zoo and begins collecting venomous snakes. Augie finds Thea's passion for hunting somewhat crazy and begins seeking some way to get out of the relationship. Meanwhile, he meets Stella who is trying to escape from Mexico City. She asks for his help but Thea is not interested. Augie insists that he should help Stella out and persuades Thea to let him take Stella halfway. During the travel, Augie sleeps with Stella and when he returns, Thea surmises what might have happened and leaves Augie. Augie returns to Chicago and learns that Simon has now become a hugely successful businessman. Simon forgives Augie and helps him find a job as an assistant of a rich millionaire tycoon, Robbie, who is attempting to write a book on the history of human happiness. Augie also begins to teach at a local school. Augie learns that Simon has been trapped by his assistant, Rani. Augie meets his childhood friend, Clam Tambo, who notices that Augie has changed. Augie tells him that his dream is to start a school, live with his mother and Georgie, marry a good woman, and raise a family of his own. Clam, on the other hand, encourages him to join the war. Augie finally enlists in the army and goes to New York for training. In New York, he meets Stella again and they decide to marry. Stella introduces Augie to a man named Mintachain, who is a successful divorce lawyer. He is having an affair with a friend of Stella. Mintachain lectures Augie on the tricks of adultery and a happy married life. Just two days after their marriage, Augie is ordered to join a warship. During their travel, Augie's ship is attacked by a torpedo and it sinks. Augie somehow survives along with a fellow man named Baste Shaw from Chicago who worked as the ship's carpenter. Soon, Augie learns that Baste Shaw is a mad person with some crazy ideas. Baste Shaw plans to take the lifeboat to Canary Islands where he can continue his mad experiments in peace and he ties Augie up when he attempts to signal a passing ship for help. At night, Augie frees himself and takes the help of a British tanker to get away from Bastishaw. After returning to New York, Augie convinces Stella to go to Europe and they settle in Paris where Stella begins working as an actor at an international film company. Augie begins managing Mintachain's dealings in Europe. Gradually, they begin leading a comfortable life. Simon and Charlotte visit them in Paris. Augie asks Simon about Rani and learns that she tried to trap and blackmail him by falsely accusing him of him impregnating her. When Simon didn't succumb to her threats, she sued him. Charlotte came to know all about it and she rescued Simon from Rani's tricks. Augie realizes that though Simon loves Charlotte, he is disappointed because Charlotte cannot become a mother. Augie himself is not satisfied with Stella and his inability to secure a real profession. One day, Augie's housemate Jacqueline tells him 
that she wishes to go to Mexico to which Oggy laughs and says that he took a whole life to get out of that ditch. He says that he is like Christopher Columbus who has truly discovered America. The novel ends at this note. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of American literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.